Pakistan's Foreign Office spokesperson Mumtaz Zehra Baloch accused India of engaging in extraterritorial killings globally. She cited evidence of Indian intelligence agency Ra's involvement in abductions and assassinations in South Asia. Mumtaz Baloch pointed to a comprehensive dossier released by Pakistan showing India's role in a 2021 Lahore attack. She condemned India for assassinating a Canadian national on Canadian soil, calling it a violation of international law and state sovereignty, raising doubts about India's reliability as a global partner. Foreign Secretary Cyrus Kazi also said Pakistan was not surprised by the Canadian accusation. Canada has accused India of involvement in the killing of Sikh separatist leader Hardeep Singh Nijjar. Nijjar advocated for an independent Khalistani state and was labeled a terrorist by India in 2020. Canada expelled India's top intelligence agent and updated its travel advisory for India, cautioning citizens against visiting Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. In a tit for tat move, India expelled a Canadian diplomat, warned its citizens of visiting some parts of Canada, and urged legal action against anti-Indian elements in Canada. In the Asian Development Bank's latest report, Pakistan faces exceptionally high downside economic risks. The report highlights that adherence to an economic adjustment program until April 2024 is crucial for stability and growth. Despite fiscal and monetary policy challenges, GDP growth is projected at 1.9% in fiscal year 2024. With external factors like global financial conditions and political instability posing risks, multilateral support has been deemed vital for reserve accumulation and exchange rate stability. While recovery is expected in fiscal year 2024, uncertainty remains due to demand limitations. The report says that inflation and import challenges will persist with inflation projected at 25%. The current account deficit is expected to rise to 1.5% of GDP, but international reserves should grow. An Islamabad trial court has halted proceedings in the case of journalist Arshad Sharif's murder, citing lack of interest from the prosecution. This comes after repeated non-compliance by key witnesses, including his wife Sumaya Arshad and producer, who were issued arrest warrants for failing to appear before the court to record their statements. The judge's efforts to move the case forward has remained unsuccessful. The delay has also prompted concerns about the progress in the case. as the judge was supposed to report to the supreme court on its developments on the other hand the wife claims she never received court summons and only learned about her warrants through media reports UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres is hosting the Climate Ambition Summit with notable absentees including China and the US. Despite rising global temperatures and extreme weather, greenhouse gas emissions are on the rise, fueling profits for fossil fuel companies. Guterres set high criteria for speakers insisting on concrete net zero emission plans. Of the 41 speakers announced, major players like China, the US, the UK, Japan, and India were absent. The absence of leaders from top economies may impact the summit's outcomes, attributed to global conflicts, economic uncertainty, and opposition from fossil fuel interests. Climate activists are growing frustrated, but some hope lies in Canada's Justin Trudeau and the EU's Ursula von der Leyen addressing goals and financing commitments. This precedes the COP28 climate talks in the UAE, focusing on tripling renewable energy by 2030 and phasing out fossil fuels by 2050. Azerbaijan has announced a ceasefire in the Nagorno-Karabakh region after Armenian separatist forces agreed to the terms. According to Reuters report, under this agreement, separatist forces will disarm and disband, and talks about the region's future and the ethnic Armenians residing there will commence. Nagorno-Karabakh is recognized internationally as Azerbaijani territory, but it has been governed by separatist Armenian authorities, leading to years of conflict. 
Azerbaijan plans to integrate the region's 120,000 ethnic Armenians, promising to protect their rights under the constitution. However, there is skepticism among some Armenians who fear ethnic cleansing. The outcome, a military victory for Azerbaijan, could lead to political turmoil in Armenia. Armenian Prime Minister faces calls to resign and there is anger over Russia's inability to stop Azerbaijan's actions. The ceasefire is expected to result in separatist fighters leaving Karabakh for Armenia and handing over weapons under Russian peacekeeper supervision.